and welcome to Tiny Kitchen Theater where I make big things happen in this tiny kitchen. Today we're cooking up joy. We're cooking something from the joy of cooking. Today it's baked butternut squash stuffed with sausage and apples. Doesn't that sound good? If you have this edition of the book, it's on page 309. Let's get started. Preheat the oven to 375. Done. Grease a large baking dish enough to hold the squash comfortably and half lengthwise remove the seeds and strings. I've already done this, yay! Range cut side up in a baking dish and brush lightly with vegetable oil. Cover with a lid or aluminum foil. Bake until almost tender, 30 to 40 minutes. Remove from the oven, let the squash cool slightly, and then keep the oven on. Prepare, wait, prepare bread stuffing with sausage and apples, page 533. No. Hello and welcome to Tiny Kitchen Theater. We're cooking up joy. Can you feel my joy? We're on page 533 so that we can make one of the recipes that is somehow an ingredient in the thing we really want to make. We're making bread stuffing with sausage and apples. Page 533. So, what are we going to need? A pound of bulk pork sausage. So, it's quarantine, so we're just going to use what we have, and what I had were sausage links that I slit, pulled out of the casings, and crumbled. So that's ready to go. Four cups of diced, peeled, green apples, such as Granny Smith. Didn't have those either, but these are going to work just fine. Next ingredient. Basic bread stuffing, page 532. No! Welcome to Tiny Kitchen Theater. We're cooking up joy. Feel my joy. We're making basic bread stuffing. Okay. Well, I mean, I can't even look at you right now. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Uh, uh, kitchen. You're too tiny. Okay. One pound of sliced, firm, white sandwich, French or Italian bread, including the crusts. I have this. A pound of bread. This is sourdough bread that I made. Am I going to make a video about sourdough bread? No. You know why? Because you can bake with Jack, and you should. He's really good. Check him out on YouTube. He's adorable, has a cute accent, and he'll teach you how to make everything, including sourdough bread. So, let's get this on the tray. Oh dear. Hang on. Uh. Oh no. There it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut into cubes, crusts included. Ta -da. Ooh, this looks good already. I'm excited. Preheat the oven 400. Baking sheet. Five to ten minutes. Okay, see you then. Large skillet. Yeah, well. I don't have room for a large skillet. Here's a large pot. What goes in here? Butter. Oh yeah. It says half to one full stick of unsalted butter. You do you. This is half a stick. Add to that two cups of chopped onions. It says a cup of fine chopped celery. I didn't have any celery, so I just added extra onion. It'll be all right. Okay, so the heat goes off on the stove, and then we add this spice mixture. Now, what is this? It is parsley, sage, thyme, salt, pepper, ground nutmeg, and ground cloves. Man, does that smell good. And also, foaming onions and butter is just it makes everything better. It's better with butter. It's better with butter. Mm -mm. Yum. Okay, I think it's almost time to pull the bread cubes out from the oven. We're just gonna put the bread right into this pot. Toss until well combined. Ooh, roasty toasty. Woohoo! Carefully. Oh, look at that. Yes. Mm. 
Yes. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Stuffing cubes overboard. Ow. 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 Get back here. Okay. Toss to combine. You got it. Butter party! Whoop, whoop. Oh gosh, it smells good. It smells like Thanksgiving in here. In fact, this recipe indicates that you could in fact cook it inside the bird. This guidance is very old. I don't know that I cook stuffing in a bird anymore. I don't know that I cook anything in a bird anymore that isn't just aromatics. But you could certainly cook this with a bird, couldn't you? That looks really good. Okay, what's next? A third of a cup to one cup of chicken stock. I have chicken stock right here. If you need chicken stock, there's a video. I'll link it below. I'll teach you how to make stock out of things you have probably been throwing away your whole life. And it goes. Fantastic. Looks good, smells good. We're gonna get it into this enormous bowl. Move it on. Okay. Yum. Tiny Kitchen Theater. <laughs> Today we're going to make bread stuffing with sausage and apples. We've already made one of the ingredients, which is the basic bread stuffing, so now we're ready to move on. In a large skillet. Hey, I remember you. Break up the pound of pork sausage. Okay. Heat back on. And again, these are sausage links that I split up and crumbled. So if you don't have pork sausage. It's okay. Use what you have. In fact, the recipe even says if you wanted to use 12 ounces of brown and serve sausages thawed and cut into small pieces, go crazy, go nuts. So this we cook until it's no longer pink, about 8 to 10 minutes. Okay, so our sausages have been browning. And it says here that we're just going to go ahead and remove them to a paper towel lined plate to drain. But I have this baking sheet that I used for the bread earlier, so well, let me just get that in there. I'm just going to use a slotted spoon to drain this on paper towels. We're going to use the nice fat that rendered from the sausage to add more flavor to the bread. Into the bubbling fat, we're going to add four cups of chopped apples. Woohoo! Party! Okay. Oh, that smells good. Woo! Yes! So, the next step in this recipe is to prepare the basic bread stuffing, which we've already done. Um, so, now it says. Add the sausage and the apples and toss it with the breadcrumbs. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. And it just has to stir these until tender, so you know, we'll test a couple and see where we are. Not yet. The color of these apples cooked up in all of the nice uh, juicy pork fat that has all of those nice spicy Italian seasonings. It's turned this into, kind of looks like pieces of peach, but oh, it's apple and good. Mmm, yum. I think I was supposed to take the skins off of these. Yum. We're getting there. They're still a little bit tender crisp. We want them a bit softer than this. Mm. 
Okay. Time to get the bread back in. Oh. And our sausage. celery, sausage, apples, homemade sourdough, and an herb blend that just smells like Thanksgiving. This is beautiful. I'm excited. Okay, so heat's off. We're going to let these flavors meld, and then... <laughs> Welcome to Tiny Kitchen Theater, <laughs> where we're cooking up joy. Still, we're still cooking up joy. <laughs> I've gone around the bend, but we're ready. We're finally ready to make baked butternut squash stuffed with sausage and apples. Here we go, kids. Preheat the oven to 375. Grease the baking dish hold to hold the squash. Cut them in half. Arrange them cut side up. Brush them with oil. Cover them with foil. Put them in the oven. In the interests of getting on with our lives, I have already done this. They're in the oven. When we pull them out, it says, prepare this. Done! Nailed it! <laughs> and then it says, once the squash is cooled, scoop out most of the flesh, leaving 3 8 inch thick shells. Okay, so I'll see you back when we're ready to do that. Our squash is out of the oven. It's cooked. It's cooled. And now they're saying to just scoop out the meat, the flesh of the squash, and leave a border, three-eighths of an inch, because we're going to restuff these after we combine the butternut squash with the stuffing. Look at that. They also suggest that you try to break up the flesh of this as little as possible. But this is pretty soft, so your mileage may vary. I'm just trying really hard not to pierce the skin because this is very tender after you roast it. And the end result should look a little like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and take care of the rest. Okay, so that's all of the squash with the stuffing. Stir it combine. Gently, you just kind of want to fold it because we're trying not to break this up too much. Meanwhile, as this sat, all of the bread in the stuffing absorbed all of the apple-y goodness, all of the nice herbs that give it that terrific savory flavor, and all of the spicy porky goodness from the sausage. Now that we have this all combined, we're going to very gently, very, very gently load it up into these shells that we created when we scooped out all of the squash. And load them up because this is going to collapse as it bakes. These are going back into the oven, dotted with butter and some brown sugar. It's going to be so good. And these were great little squashes because when I cut them in half, they stood up on their own. I didn't have to make little homes for them or anything. This needs a smaller spoon. I'm making a mess. Okay. Oh yeah. Look at it. Woohoo! Mm. And now they get dotted with butter and sprinkled 
with brown sugar. Woohoo! Oh no, get back here. Frank. Yes. Mmm. Whoop Gonna get a little brown sugar brulee action going. Yes! What could be better? lot of this left over so what I'm gonna do is bake it up right alongside our beautiful beautiful squash I want this to get a nice crispy top come on you can do it yes Mm -hmm. All right, let's get these into the oven, 20 to 25 minutes on 375. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at these. They turned out so pretty. The stuffing studded with pork sausage and apples, onions, and all the sagey goodness. It smells so good in here. I hope you'll make this. It was a lot of work. We went to one recipe, and that led us to another, and that led us to another. But once we put all the pieces together, it really did come out great. But the lesson we learned today is before you start cooking, it is very, very important that you read through your entire ingredients list before you get started. This is delicious and it's so beautiful. I really hope you'll try it. Thanks for joining me. Uh -huh.